What's up, people? Ella from B Culture. Let's just get right into it. The nitty gritty of it. The raw, the true, the facts. I wanted to come on and do another video and just kind of lay things down as it is. I'm taking y'all to school, as y'all can see on the screen. I got some points I want to hit. And before I do that, let's just go through the history of myself and Native Instruments products. Now, there is this talk, or I guess you can say myth. It's this common thing that's going around YouTube about how YouTubers are in a space where they're pushing or selling gear to people, so to speak, and convincing you guys to spend money on things that you probably don't need. I would say it's all about perspective. It's all about how you think, how your mind is programmed. Because someone can say, hey, that's a good video. I like what you was able to point out. And I can see value there, but it's not for me. I'm not going to spend my money to buy that because I already have something equivalent. Or I just don't feel like I need that feature because I will be wasting money doing what you say I can do with this product. I don't need that, right? Great. That's that's really great. And I have major respect for those people who thinks like that, who's strong. You know what I mean? And then you got other people who are easily convinced because they have favorite YouTubers that they watch. They trust them. And they can clearly see value in what we are telling you about on these videos. And they go ahead and spend their money without thought. And a lot of times, people will have products that they will never use it to collect dust. And at some point you start to wake up, I guess, later on, you know, or you start selling your gear, you know, you figure it out, well, I barely cracked open the seal on this product. I just bought it because I thought it was a good idea, right? You got people like that. On this channel, what I try to do is be very transparent as to what it is we're talking about. And I often tell you guys, if you see value in this, then make the purchase. If not, then don't. I don't want you guys going out, spending your money, if you don't have it, on products that you don't or you can't afford. That's always my stance. I'm usually the person who's always telling you guys, you don't need to buy every flashy thing that pops up on these commercials because YouTube is king of, of selling TV, period, social media, period. You know what I mean? Anytime or anywhere people can put ad, advertise to you things that you probably don't need, you know, it's just going to happen. And they hope to get your click, you know. A lot of this stuff is also clickbait. People set stuff up. People have gotten clever. Clickbait. All right, that's great. You know, everybody is out here working. Everybody's grinding. And and, it, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm excluded from that. I'll say I have a community. This is my thing. This is where I stand. I have a community and my community is growing. My community is called B-Coach. Hence why I changed, because it used to be a different name. The B culture. I have a community of you guys that trust my judgment. You trust what I say. And you guys ask me a lot about what I think about certain things. There is a lot of questions I can't answer. I've seen several questions about products and gear and things like that that I've never put my hands on or never had a desire to do so. And I'll just be straight up. I don't know. And then I give you like, you know, I think it might be able to do this. I sing the video, blah, blah, blah. And I'll point you there, you know, to the people who knows more about that. But on this channel specifically, I never try to push on to you guys things that I don't believe in myself. Native Instruments happens to be a company that I believe in. I bought the first well, my first machine, the MK1, 
I don't remember what year this was, but I would say it's been years. Now, on my channel, you guys can actually fact check me. You can go on my channel and type in machine and just go all the way back to the earlier videos and you will see how long it's been since I've been talking about, you know, machine. It was probably like early 2000s. You know what I mean? Something like that. It was like, yeah, it was, when I was in college. That was, that was before 2013. You know, it, it's early on. I spent my money on it. Actually, my wife bought me that one. My wife bought me my first MK1. And on that video, I can share, you know, I share with you guys what it was. Like I, you know, I had the thing for a while. I didn't plug it up on day one. It had been sitting, you know, in the studio somewhere for about six months before I actually opened it up. Because I seen the video of somebody using it and I was like, oh, I didn't realize. Because when I first opened it up, it was like, this is a lot. You know, I couldn't really, I couldn't really get with it at first. Anyway, needless to say, when I figured out how to use the machine, it was a part of the studio. It was a part of my workflow ever since then. The thing I think that was most significant about that workflow that I've learned was that you can use the machine as a plug-in and standalone, right? When I was searching for something like that, Akai was not doing anything like that yet. I am familiar with the Akai. I've worked on the 2000, 2000 Excel, the 3000, the 4000, and the 5000. I never touched the 1000. And yeah, I pretty much touched all of them. You know what I mean? The one I had the most experience with is probably the 2000 and the 5000. The 5000 was obviously my favorite because it was the beast. You know what I mean? Programming track, track, you know, loops and whatnot and saving. It was it was amazing, right? I used to download, well, I used to grab sounds from Logic Pro and put it in the machine because I was a drummer and, you know, I needed sounds to play against. You know, it was kind of cool during that time. So anyway, at the time, I was also in Logic, right? And I needed a digital solution to program, you know, my beats or whatever. I was doing everything on the keyboard at that time, and I still have it. It was a Cork Triton studio that I owned, and I was going MIDI five-pin connection via MIDI Sport, which converted the signal to USB-A inside my computer. I'm... I'm kind of giving y'all my age a little bit and I'm showing y'all what my workflow was. So I've been around for a while and I, you know what I mean? And use a machine has always kind of been a, a part of that workflow. Well, the NPC was what I was doing, but at that time the NPC was not able, it was not capable to do what I was trying to do. I was trying to make the NPC program and trigger logic at that time. And then I had a friend tell me, about this machine thing, you know, machine to me at that time looked at like the push with all these buttons. If you never seen the push and never worked with the push, the push you, to me, it was like a million buttons. And I'm like, man, I don't want to learn how to do that. And, and I'm just thinking like, that's just a whole nother learning curve that I have to adapt to. And I'm in the middle of projects and I just felt like I didn't have time. That's what I thought about the machine at that time. But now it's like, psh, this thing is super easy, which is why I make courses for you guys because I do I do get it. But needless to say, <laughs> I'm giving y'all the whole history, you know. Needless to say, the like, like, like I say, the machine has became a part of the workflow because of that capability, the, the integration between my computing. And at that time, I didn't have no complete control keyboards i don't think there was one even out at that time yet there was one that came out a little later so i didn't have a machine on day one like you know when they released it i found out about it later on but that was when the mk1 was still flagship you know their first machine model or whatever totally foreign company and whatever and i just felt in love i fell in love with them the workflow and when I heard the sounds, I was like, man, that's a producer's candy store. You know what I mean? 
It's like a kid going into a candy store. You just, man, sugar galore, sugar galore, right? So that was that was what it was for me. And I just kind of like locked in at that point. And then I just felt like, okay, maybe I could do some videos because I wanted to get into this YouTube thing. You know, I've always was one of the ones that felt like I wasn't worthy to put stuff on a social media because I felt like, you know, I was still, you know, fresh or whatever. But, you know, I saw some videos and I was like, well, I can so do this. Anyway, once I did that, the NK1 was my thing. And then I upgraded to the machine studio. I remember like it was yesterday. I went to the Good Time Center and I think it was like seven or eight hundred dollars at that time. I saved my money and I went up there and got it. Actually, I didn't get it from Guitar Center. That was the first place I was trying to get it from. And they were like sold out or I was trying to get them to hold one for me. And they, yeah, so that whole thing, right? When I got the Machine Studio, I didn't get the NK2 because I didn't feel like it was a, significant update the mk2 presented colors but i was like eh, i don't want to spend six hundred dollars to get mk2 just because it has color on the pads but it is pretty dope then the mk the micro came out the micro one around that time with colors and stuff like that i'm like that's kind of cool now they like you know they're servicing or, or they're going after the people who wants to be more of a compact you know compact solution I felt like the MK1 was compact enough, to be honest with you. So I just was rocking with my MK1 the whole time, traveling. I always had my laptop with me. You know what I mean? That was my thing. And then, but I was after the machine studio. And I, you know what I mean? I, so I got mine from Sweetwater instead. Shout out to Sweetwater. I'm not getting paid to say anything. I, I'm actually not getting paid to say anything about Native instruments is this is just me giving y'all the true, the raw. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I have people that come to my videos that make it seem as though I am trying to sell you guys something and or like trying to cover up something just to make Native instruments look good because I'm getting free product. So that's why I'm giving y'all the the history i'm showing y'all that when i first started out i paid money to get started mk1 and then come back and get the mk the the machine studio which means i believe enough in the company that i'm willing to drop eight hundred dollars or a thousand it was somewhere around there to get another hardware piece in this company that i really believe in and i just thought that the machine studio would definitely enhance the, the workflow. My own hard earned money that I spent. At this time, I was not getting anything for free from Native Instruments at that time. I spent my money to get that thing. There was an issue with the, the studio though. Something about it. No, it was an issue with my MK1. I remember that. I had to return it. Because the Guitar Center, and I, we get, we got that from the Guitar Center. There was uh, something with one of the screens. It was a, you know, defective unit. I got it replaced, no problem. Anyway, needless to say, you know, with with you know that gear span workflow, working with sounds that I love and enjoy, adding them in my workflow, and whatnot. Then one day came where Native Instruments reached out to me and said, hey, we like your videos. We was wondering if you will, uh, you know, continue doing videos, you know, and we'll send you a free, we'll send you this. At that time, it was the MK3. They sent me the MK3 for free. Actually, it was a little bit before that, though, because the complete collections, you know, the ultimate you know, I was getting that, and I'm just being transparent right now. I that's the title of the video, just being transparent. So I got that for free, you know. But here's the thing, though. 
I use these products. Although I get this stuff sent to me and I'm included in the releases and whatnot, I use these products. I don't get on here and make videos and tell y'all, go ahead, grab this, here's a sale, grab this, do this, do that. I'm not on here doing that. I'm actually telling you guys about something that I truly believe in and I actually use. I do live streams on this channel and they are pretty length, lengthy, right? During these live streams, you will see that majority of the music that I create, I'm pulling from Native Instruments products a lot. Complete control, contact, all of the instruments in there, massive. I'm using that, you know, I'm using the machine as a plug-in. You know what I mean? I'm, you know, pulling from different, pulling from, from, from different instruments. I am a arteria type person as well. And the fact that they have NKS integration inside the keyboards. So I use arteria as well. But I'm, you know, you know, you see how everything is just kind of connected. Native Instrument Products is connected and it's like it's in the circle. It's in the hub of everything that's going on, everything that's happening. You see what I'm saying? Hopefully my video is still clear. But this is what it is. This this is what it is. And so I got my first complete control, which was the Mark II version. And I've been using it ever since. And then they sent me the, the Viper Gray. I think it's the Viper Gray, right? Complete con control. They sent me that. And now I have the new one. The Complete Control Mark Three. Let me tell you about it. This thing is pretty cool, right? I said all that to say this. This thing is pretty cool. I like it a lot. There are bugs and things that are happening because it's the first iteration of its kind. And when I say that, that means that there's a lot of things on this keyboard that changed, meaning the technology behind it. The screens, fresh, fresh build. It's no longer the two screens no more. Fresh, this thing is totally redesigned, right? It's pretty much the same form factor in terms of like the layout, so to speak. You know, it's got that classic native instrument design, but totally fresh on the device itself you could change MIDI settings you used to have to do that inside of the plugin in the computer turned on connected you know what I mean I don't need to be in the computer to change the MIDI settings so this, that means this thing has a computer built inside some type of chip in here where it's doing a lot of processing on its own that's a that's a major move that's something that's not in the previous models because you needed a computer to, to power those. This one is different. Hence, NKS 2.0. Now, there's a lot of flag about integration. And again, just being raw, true, factual, very transparent right now. I am a, I am probably one of the biggest, I'm real big on things working together, you know, the continuity of things, the integration, I'm a big, I'm, I'm the biggest on that. However, It is not a, it, you know, the integration is not there yet with the new keyboard and the old hardware. Basically, they're starting from zero. That's kind of my take on it. Starting from ground zero and they're building their way up, right? NKS 2.0 is a total fresh build. So... It is easy for some of you guys to jump on the bandwagon like other people and just totally come at a bashful sense like, I can't believe that integration, they didn't, 
and 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 then you get people say, well, if it's not ready, then why did they announce it? And why did why is it out? Okay, <laughs> let's go here. Let's talk about Apple. When they have a event, if any of you guys are familiar with that, and the other people who cover all of their all of the rumors, right? There's rumors before the actual product is presented. And a lot of times when they present new products, it's not immediately available at the moment. Sometimes, for instance, the date of this video, I will mention something that's not out yet, which is the Apple Vision, right? They're like goggle style glass that goes over your head, right? This is a new technology we in this this um AI world. Um yeah, I can't think of the proper word that to come to me, but these glasses are not out yet. But they announced it. And so there are people making videos on this product. So what's so different from that? than what we are doing here over here with Native Instruments. There's a product here. We started talking about it before it was released to the public. Now it's released to the public, but there are some things that, you know, has to happen before it becomes like the king of all keyboards, right? There are some bugs. And if you think about how a company is, is structured in terms of products, they look for feedback in how we use these products. <laughs> so therefore you guys, when you make a purchase it's really more so like, do you believe in the product? Do you believe it, it's an investment, right? Especially with something like this it's not buying it because it's perfect. It's buying it because you know what it could be. And you see the value right now. Like this keyboard is good enough to do what you need it to do, even right now. There's some few things that might hang up, whatever, you know, whatever. Firmware update, that's why they do updates. You know what I'm saying? Even on the current, I don't know if they still support the NKS1, but there is a lot of plugins and hardware products or whatever. They're still getting updates to this day. You know, you, you know what I'm saying? I've... I, to be honest with you, I feel like this video is kind of pointless, but some people need to hear this. But yeah, the keyboard is out. I love it. And I'm not just saying it because I'm a fan boy, um, because I am a fan of the product, which is why I talk about it. Um, So that's why I'm on these videos talking about the gear. Now, machine. Now, I don't have that much details on the machine and if it will be available or if they will be making one or when it will come out. But I will say this, I know enough and there's not, I know, I know enough about native instruments where I highly doubt that the machine will be excluded. I highly doubt. I highly doubt that. The machine is like their baby or our baby. We've all adapted this hardware and we, and this is what stands against bigger you know other companies i believe at some point that there may be a machine a new machine now don't know what it will be machine 3.0 machine mark 4 machine studio 2 don't know machine uh workforce i don't know you know, the naming convention is something that they they will come up with. But if you if you guys think about it, if NKS 2.0 is out and all of the other hardware is on NKS 1, they're, they're not going to work seamlessly because it's a total fresh build. And if it's breaking the... the the integration that means that anything they come forward with in the future will be on the 2.0 integration. You get what I'm saying? 
I get the frustration of a lot of you guys that are, you know, you're frustrated. You already have a machine product and you just want it to work immediately. And and this would not be the case if they released a new keyboard on the NKS one. And you know, I think the big the biggest thing about a lot of you guys, you guys don't understand what's really going on behind closed doors. And that's why I think the community gets hung up. It's just like Apple, again, using them as an example with their chips, right? At first it was Intel, right? That's most of their, the the life of them, you know, most of them was created on this Intel core chip technology, which was made by Microsoft, I think. It wasn't made by Apple. That's, that's my point. So everything was ran and powered by Intel. So anytime uh, Apple computers will come out, you know, new versions, new OS system, you know, they could change the ports and whatever they want on the system. They they can make things faster and do other things, blah, 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 blah. Every year it's faster than it was before. That's their common wording on stage. We have a new computer and it's faster than ever before, or something like that. But it but they're all using Intel Core. They're all using the same, you know what I mean? The same chip, so to speak. But once they moved over to an M1, M2, and now M3, and maybe M4, you know, seem like they come out with these chips pretty fast. There seems to be a break. Like a shift. Now, you you know what I mean? If a company is not making product that can support the the M chips, then you're not going to get, it's not going to work. You know what I mean? You notice how they always use this as a buffer, or especially in the, in the music community. When there's a new OS system, we don't immediately update to it. And, and there's a reason behind that, because things may break. Now me, I'm a technology person. I, I take risks. And so a lot of times I do update. And I do it to tell you guys about it as well. And I have several machines around the house as well. So it's like, if I update one machine, I'm not broken. You know what I mean? I can always pull up a project that I, you know, if, if it's not working. So I'll upgrade one of my OS first and see how well the programs I like to use is still working. A lot of times, technically, the manufacturers did not go in and make changes for it to, like, natively work on the new OS update, right? But in a lot of cases, it still works. You see what I'm saying? It's the same with their computers. And if y'all follow what I'm, what I'm saying with the processors, this time, Intel versus M chips, that's a big gap. And there has to be some other thing going on because Apple, this is Apple chip now. Apple was producing this versus Intel where years and years and years everything. So if I was to break that down, bring everything back to native instruments, Intel will be considered NKS1. The M chips will be considered NKS2. You get what I'm saying? So just like all of the other keyboards, the M, the Complete Control MK1, the Complete Control MK2, all of the A series keyboards, they were all on the NKS1 chip protocol. So they all work and they continue to work. The integration continue to work. All of the machine products, Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3, the studio, all of the micro versions, they all work. The integration has never broken. Boom. And that's also something to note. If you notice how everything was working before, then why would you? flip out about NKS2, oh my gosh, it's not working. I, You know, I mean, I don't mean to come out harsh to s some people, but it's like these comments, man, like seriously, like 
like you don't know well maybe you don't how how it works you know so I, I believe in the company to the point where I you know even though like I say I am a big integration type person I get what they trying to do I get where they going so I'm not tripping and a lot of times me using the machine as a plug-in in my doll, I still use the machine with no problem. I don't necessarily have to have them both sync together in terms of integration, the keyboard and the machine. Because if the machine is coming in as a plug-in, I'm using the machine to do whatever. And a lot of times I'm just after the drums or whatnot. So like I'm inside of Studio One. If I'm inside of Studio One, the keyboard is working everything inside of Studio One. You know what I mean? Or Bitwig. Everything I'm using inside of Bitwig, different plugins I'm pulling in and whatever. The the integration between the this keyboard and that doll is perfect. You know, even though they didn't announce it officially, you know, they have to put that buffer or put that uh, you know, but all you gotta do is find NKS. I'm sorry, the Mark III version in terms of the doll, you know, integration, and it works. I I have Bitwig working, Studio One is working, Able to Live is working. I haven't been in Logic yet with this thing, but they actually boast that Logic works. Like that's actually the first thing that they say. So it definitely works with Logic. I just haven't tried it because I don't, I'm not in Logic, um, but Logic came out with a new update, so I may have to go in and visit, and then that's got to be my way of uh, testing this keyboard. But uh, I just, I just wanted to cover that with you guys because um, I'm continuing to get these comments. You know, it don't bother me, but I there there are some some interesting comments. You know. And I I felt the need to let you guys know who I am and where I come from, my background. Native Instruments don't pay me to say anything. I do get free stuff. Yeah, great, because I talk about this stuff. When you guys go and visit those affiliate links, by the way, thank you. There are some in the, on this, you know, in the video. I appreciate it because every dollar count because I do these videos for free. I do these videos to show y'all what's going on with these products and and take it through a real world experience. Hence the live streams. I'm using this device to create live beats. You see what I'm saying? And when y'all ask me questions, I'm able to answer those questions live on air and show y'all some stuff. I will be doing more videos on this keyboard, but that is why I get it for free so I can keep updating you guys. I am a part of the community. And I use this thing. I use the keyboard. I use machine. I use everything. From time to time, I still use my machine jam. I'm hoping that they update that, come out with a new one. But um, I can't really share that much more with you guys because they, I don't have that information, even though I kind of sit at the table with, you know, Native Instruments, so to speak. But, I don't know what they're going to do with machine, but I'm just going based off of the history. You know what I mean? What if they would have came out with a new version of machine, right? A lot of us will be happy, right? Absolutely. We will be happy. It, it, it will be, maybe that, maybe that would have been the better choice. Maybe that's where y'all coming from. And I'm pretty sure that's where y'all coming from. They should have came out with a new version of machine. But they came out with the plus because you guys were complaining about something to be portable. And when they made it portable, you guys were complaining about the battery. There's no battery, so it's not really portable. So it's like, okay, what do you really want? Because if they put the battery in there, then it would have been more expensive than it was. And now it then to be like, that's ridiculous. I'm not spending that much money on that. Well, now... I do know what Ableton did with the Push 3 
And I thought that was pretty cool how they have several models where you can pray, you can pay whatever is comfortable to you to get what's important to you. And then you can upgrade later on, like that, buy the battery pack or attachment that goes with, you know, something like that. I haven't looked at everything, but I do know that there's different models you can buy and you can build on and make it stronger. I, I, I think that's the same for the hard drive that's in there. I don't know. But maybe, maybe they should have did that. I don't know. But, you know, everything's a trial and error. You know, sometimes companies got to see what works and what don't work. And um, maybe machines should have been first. But then what would have happened after that? The people that use the complete control devices will be complaining about how it hasn't been a new version that got published or, or released. You know, you foresee that happening. You know, where's the new keyboards? Did they forget about the keyboards? You know, so that's that's kind of my just my my spiel. You know about everything i hope you guys got something from this video and um enjoy my little scribble scrabble on the screen um yeah let's go live let's talk about it even more if you are new to this channel subscribe hit the thumbs up again i'm ella remember lifestyle is governed by art be coached